1941, a police officer was injured during an airstrike in World War II. He got a deep cut on his face and got a nasty bacterial infection. He later developed sepsis, which means the blood in his body was teeming with bacteria. The doctor did all they could. They even take one eye out just to prolong his life. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. In 2016, an old lady came back from a trip. You know, she broke her leg and she developed a nasty bone infection in her right leg and the hip. Again, the doctor did all they could, but they couldn't save him, save her. All right. So these two cases, the two patients, they both died from bacterial infections. But the reason behind could it be more different. See, that police officer, his name is Albert Alexander. He's the first patient who received penicillin. And penicillin works wonderfully. He's showing great sign of recovery. Unfortunately, back then, penicillin was produced using a fungus. Right. They had to grow the fungus using grass, glass vessels like this. And the production yield was so low that they need hundreds to thousands of these vessels just to produce enough penicillin for one dose. When there's no more penicillin, they had to stop the treatment. And just 10 days later, his conditions relapsed and Albert passed away. Well, fast forward 75 years, you would think that surely, well, surely, with all the antibodies that we have, we should be able to treat a bacterial infection, right? right? Well, unfortunately for her case, she developed, she was infected with a pen drug resistant bacteria, which means none of the antibiotics was working. Right. And to be exact, none of the 26 antibiotics that the doctors throw at her was responding. There was really nothing they can do. It's very sad. Shortly after Albert passed away, for the next three to four years, there was a great progress in penicillin production. You know, the big pharma companies jump in and ramp up the production. They invent new fermentation technology. Right, so by 1945, it was available for everyone. In fact, penicillin played an important role during World War II. It's estimated that penicillin saved thousands of lives towards the end of the World War II. And people were celebrating penicillin like it's a wonder drug. We just love it. Right. And in fact, for the next 20 years, it's known as the golden era of antibiotics, where most of our antibiotics that we're using currently are being discovered during that short time frame. And life is good. Right. We start using it using it everywhere, even, even to not to treat bacteria. All right. Yeah, because people were so comfortable using antibiotics, right? So half of the prescription, antibiotic prescription, was to a viral infection. You know, when you have a flu, you don't need antibiotics. But in some countries, they still prescribe antibiotics anyway. So that's a mix, misprescription, misuse of antibiotics. Worse still, 80% in some countries of the antibiotics sold were for livestock farming, was to the animals, to your chicken, to your cattle. 80%. That's just upsetting. And that, you know, Antibiotics and antibiotic resistance, you know, they do come in hand in hand. Resistance will occur naturally, but doing it this way, we just accelerate the entire process. So here's the timeline 
of antibiotics and antibiotic resistance. You know, even before the first clinical trial of the first, hu well, first human patient received penicillin, you know, the resistance against penicillin has been uh, reported even one year before. Methicillin. Once it's introduced, two years later, we have methicillin resistance Staphylococcus aureus, or better known as MRSA, and it remains one of the most deadly multi drug resistance bacteria that still haunts the doctors to this day. We have vancomycin, a very potent antibiotic. And just 16 years later, we get vancomycin resistance atherococcus. The same case for linozolid, except just one year later, we observe resistance against it. So we are currently in this you know, tug of war. We have been in this tug of war. You know, I introduced new antibiotics. The bacteria developed resistance against it. And we just introduced a new one. However, for the past two decades, a few decades or so, we have been losing this war. Antibiotics has gotten so expensive, it takes much longer to develop. And the pharma companies are not doing it anymore. It's just not money making enough. Whereas for bacteria, well, they have no problem developing resistance. Do you know that bacteria doubles themselves in 30 minutes? If you start from one cell and 24 hours later, do you know how many cells they are? It's one quadrillion, 1,000 trillion cells, just one day. Right? Just imagine the amount of combinations they can do, they can try out to develop resistance against it. So bacteria will always, always win in this case. But if we don't introduce antibiotics fast enough, we're going to lose, and we are losing. We are losing this, losing this war. These are some numbers to show how bad the situation is currently. Right? It's estimated that you know, up to 700,000 people died every year. And that was the study done in 2014, 2016. Right. And there was a paper, landmark paper published this year that estimated that in 2019, more than 1.2 million people died directly due to AMR infection. And going at this rate, it's projected by, that by 2050, that number will balloon to 10 million. 10 million deaths every year. So you think that well, I heard about antimicrobial resistance, but I don't feel it. I don't see it around me. So what does it matter? Right? Now, without effective antibiotics, modern day medicine would not be possible. You can't do your surgery safely. Sorry. You can't do your surgery safely. Your organ transplant, your heart bypass, your C-section, everything will be super risky. And do you know that for chemotherapy, for effective chemotherapy, you need to go with antibiotics as well? Because the immune system is weak, and you need antibiotics to fight off the infection. Even small injuries like a cut, you know, if you get infected without antibiotics, it might lead to amputation. And common cases like strep throat can be life-threatening. Uh, ear infections can get into your brain and leave permanent damage. So it's really serious. So do, what, do, what can we do about it? What do we do about it? Luckily, uh, the government and policymakers in Singapore and all around the world have recognized this, and they start to put resources expertise and time into it. Right. So here at um, Singapore MIT Alliance and Research and Technology, we have a program that's specifically set up just to tackle this problem. Right. So we do surveillance. You know, we go into, we go outside, collect wastewater in the sewage, collect back to the lab, and then we test for the presence of anti Bacteria, antibiotics resistance gene. Right? So why is it important to detect the presence of these genes? Right? For, for, for one, is that it tells us 
uh, how bad the AMR situation is at the community level. Right? And it gives a very crucial uh, feedback mechanism to the government on how they can better tweak their policies. Yeah. Because all these genes, they can pass around. The, it, they can, the, the bacteria can pass this gene around. Right? It's like a breeding, breeding spot for them to just see whether they can make the best antibiotics. Um, antibody resistance bacteria. And we don't want that. We also do uh, diagnostics. You know, we, we develop a test kit that um, can distinguish between a virus infection and a bacterial infection and that can dramatically uh, reduce the misprescription of antibiotics. We also do therapeutics. You know, my research group focuses on therapeutics. Um, we do high throughput screening, which means we take millions of compounds, throw it into the bacteria, and see which one works. We can also throw protein-based agent, polymers, and do it. But today I would like to focus one that I think has a potential to solve the AMR. You know, I was thinking to myself, I was brainstorming for ways to tackle AMR. I was thinking, what's the natural enemy of bacteria? Answer is it's bacteriophages. So this is a highly specialized virus that does nothing but eats bacteria for lunch. Right? It, it's, so, it's, its sole purpose is to kill bacteria. That's great. And in fact, even in Singapore and all around the world, people are studying bacteriophages. Then I go one step deeper. I ask, what if you can take the weapon that the bacteriophage uses to kill the bacteria and just take that weapon alone and kill the bacteria. Right. And that weapon is lysin. Right. So it's an enzyme, a protein, that can digest the outer cell wall of the bacteria. So what we do is that we take this protein, take it out from the bacteriophage's hand, and then produce in the lab, and then we throw it to the bacteria. So it works really quickly. It pokes, it punctures, you know, it pops the bacteria like a balloon. Right. In fact, it's so, it kills really slow, uh, kills really quickly. Right. We can have a tube of bacteria, like full of billions of bacteria. We just add a few drops of lysine, we shake it. That turbid solution, that thick solution, in 10 to 20 minutes' time, it will become clear. It's that fast. Right? Other than that, it's also highly selective. You know, there are good bacteria and there are bad bacteria. You know, we don't want to kill all the bacteria. We only want to kill the bacteria that you know, do us harm. And lysine can do just that. Right? And because lysine can target bacteria really quickly, and it targets a highly conserved area of the bacteria, Bacteria finds it very difficult to develop resistance against it. So in the lab, we do have lysines that target MRSA, target vancomycin resistance atherococcus. We also have lysines that targets Capsilia pneumoniae, which is a very pan-resistant bacteria that infected the old lady. We have that solution, but it's not perfect yet. We do need time. And I'm afraid time is something that we do not have. So we need everyone to play their part, to slow down AMR, to buy us time, to develop new antibiotics and new antibacterial agents like license to tackle AMR. And you, you can do your part. You can finish your antibiotic prescription. You can don't ask for antibiotics if you caught a flu. You can actually don't buy meat that's being grown by antibiotics. Every little bit counts, but we have to do it right now. Trust me, we're not ready for a world without effective antibiotics. Thank you.